This is my Pioneer SX950 receiver, which I've been putting off repairing for um, a few years now. You, it's just been sitting on a shelf, but I figured I'd better take care of it before it starts moulding. So, the story behind this thing is I got it for free out of a trash, of course, and it was broken, as these things tend to be, and I fixed it, but it exploded, and I fixed it, and it exploded, and I fixed it, and it exploded a third time. And then it just went on the shelf. Those explosions were about a year apart or so, so they weren't due to obvious repair issues, but they really took some time to get there. So the first time around it actually had some very major issues, and as a matter of fact, every single semiconductor on the power amplifier assembly, including the special diode for controlling the bias, were replaced. These diodes can easily be replaced with uh, 1N4148 free in series, which is thankful. But, uh, but what killed it the last time was, I believe, these two original bias potentiometers. I believe one of them has gone open circuit. Because if I remember correctly, I was using it and uh, all of a sudden it just started pouring smoke lightly out of it while it kept playing. And I just, of course, immediately shut it off and brought it to the shop and uh, gave it a quick check over. I didn't really find anything particular, but I ordered new potentiometers anyway, since I figured the, the symptom was typical. So I figured we'd uh, take it apart a bit more, replace the potentiometers, and see if we can get this thing to fire up. Again, it's been quite some time, and... This guy has really been through quite a few parts in its time. So I'm sure we're going to find some issue with it, and I'm quite certain we're going to bring it back to life, because I have spent, uh, shall we say, quite a fair amount of time getting acquainted with the circuitry inside of it. So let's go by just uh, removing the power amplifier board for the third or fourth time. So working on this power amplifier board is uh, sadly a real bother because, uh, as you can see by the rather dodgy uh, shape of these connections, you need to disconnect all the power transistors. They were originally connected with twist connectors, but uh, every time I've removed them, they've just been resoldered back. And I need to unsolder them again. Given the way things have been going with us, I should just install a bloody quick-release mechanism for them. But you need to get these off, you need to disconnect the bias compensation diodes and uh, you need to unscrew it from this bracket. Or you could undo all the wires down the bottom of the board, but that's just even more work. Well, I just gave it a cursory measure around while the soldering iron was uh, heating up and uh, quite curiously, I neither of these bias potentiometers measure open right now. Uh, that's uh, not to say that they're okay. They could have just closed up as they got very hot. But uh, at least uh, all the outputs seem to be okay. There are no dead shorts or stuff going on, so... That's at least a good thing, since these are eight brand new outputs, and they are not uh, the cheapest outputs. I believe I used the MGE15003 ones, and whatever their complement are. So they are 250 watt, uh, should be 250 watt rated transistors. So, one would suppose that they would <laughs> be able to handle quite a bit of abuse without going bad. But, uh, yeah, we've got to get a board out because I'm not plugging this thing in without having a check on the back first. Alright, we with the power transistors and the heating out of the way, we can actually have a look at just how reworked this board is. So, this board hasn't received any particular solder reworking. All those redone joints you see, such as this entire cluster here, these, 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 all of these, 
they are replaced components from when the amplifier is blowing up in its different stages of explosive behavior. We've also got a bad trace which has been bridged there and pretty much the same thing going on on the other channel. Some traces of smoke, oh, all kinds of nastiness. And with the potentiometers we want to replace are situated there and all the way over there in the corner. So I'm going to just nav those out and install a couple of these nice 10 turn ones instead, which are a bit less likely to go open circuit because uh, due to the design of a, this amplifier, which is sadly very common, is that if these potentiometers go open circuit, uh, you get uh, absolute maximum bias voltage. In other words, you are shorting the power rail out across the power transistors. And that's not a very good thing for you, for, for your amplifier or you. So, uh, let's get those bad parts out. Well, hello there. I think I might have found a very probable cause for at least one burnout. That is indeed a pad for one of the driver transistors, emitter resistors, and that's fallen clean off. Now, this is one of the devices which failed in the original failure of this amplifier, so this might have been spooking around for quite some time because that's that's an obvious failure it was just stuck down with some uh, flux residue which uh, i must have missed all the other times it looked perfectly fine i was just going to replace these uh, uh, for no other reason than doing it because they have gotten a bit burnt over the time as you're able to see down there so that was a certain stroke of luck. Perhaps we might actually be getting closer to unravelling the mystery of this amplifier's repeated failures. Now that would actually be impressive. That would make me very, very happy indeed. Oh, so I've now extracted a literal handful of components out of this device. And uh, I was actually wrong in my initial assertion. These potentiometers are actually the DC offset potentiometers. I had already replaced the bias parts, so I'm not entirely certain as to what's up with that. Uh, I probably replaced them, then put this thing aside waiting for parts or something and then forgot about it and now I have no idea why I put it aside to begin with. Possibly because I've received a few capacitors I intended to put in it, but I put some other ones in there instead. Anyway, we are about to find out because I'm going to put these in a the bag and uh, we're ready to use my variac of death to give this thing a bit of a go. Now, normally for testing an amp like this, I'd use my TTI power supply, but uh, this thing has so many power rails that I simply don't have enough channels to do that. Uh, I need to have the transformer, the amplifier, hooked in anyway, and in order to disconnect power to the amplifier board, uh, I would have to desolder some wire, so I'd just rather use my variac since I have one anyway. I have not connected the power transistors since, although they test fine, I'd rather find out whether or not the pre-amplifier board or the driver circuit works fine before hooking those back up, just in case. I have done uh, quite a few measurements around the board, and everything seems to check out. There are no random shorts or over any power rails that all the components that uh, would be likely to suffer seem to be okay, but... I could be mistaken, and we're about to find out. Okay, we should be good to go. So, on the scope, we're monitoring the output of both the driver circuits, just measured at the output of the amplifier. And uh, on the multimeter, we're measuring uh, the one of the supply voltages. I'm not measuring both. And 
And that's about it. I'm also got a power meter hooked up to the variac, but uh, you're not going to see that. Anyway, let's see what this thing is going to do. So now we're applying just a couple of volts AC. Well, we've got supply voltage straight away. That's a very good sign. Let's just slowly crank that up. That's looking very, very good. Now, it is normal for this amplifier to have a quite significant DC offset before it starts up properly. It isn't using any abnormal amount of power. And the DC offset usually settles back down once you get it up to a reasonable supply voltage. Should roll be coming around by now. There we go. That's starting to look quite normal where it's about. Well, according to a very accurate about 120 volts AC, so that's a bit weird. The amplifier certainly shouldn't have. You know what, I might actually be measuring across both power rails right now. That's entirely feasible. I don't remember how that's hooked up. I'd better check the documentation. And yes, indeed, we are actually measuring across the power rail, which is a good thing, because we're measuring across pins 14 and 15 there, and they run off straight to, to the power rail, so we're getting ground just to, out of a case. I'll just uh, gingerly keep on turning this up slowly. We have a an idle pair consumption of about 30 something watts, including the Variac. And we've got a relay click. We have a bit of noise on one of the channels, but that's to be expected. We do have a ground loop. We're at about 210 volts supply. I'll stop right there. We're consuming about 48 watts in total. I'd say that looks pretty good. We don't have any very concerning DC offsets. A bit of noise on one of the channels, but that's not something I would worry too much about. There's actually quite a lot of it. Hmm. We do get more noise if we turn the volume up, so we do have something going on. Let's just uh, put some sort of a test signal into it and just see what it does. If we can actually pass in signal, then I'm happy, then I'm just putting the power transistors back in. And we've got about a volt going into the left channel now, so that should be... Yep, that's showing up quite well. That looks absolutely fine. So let's check for the right channel. Yeah, we're triggering off a of channel too, so that's going to roll, but that looks absolutely fine as well. Is it causing any raised power draw or anything? So I would be quite confident calling this a fix, knock on wood, but uh, let's uh, reinstall the power transistors and hope it keeps going. And we also have a really slow drain of those big caps, that's looking excellent. That means we've got no quiescent draw that's causing any issues, nothing's going to get warm. Alright, we've got about the same thing going on now, uh, except uh, the scope is hooked up to the output of the am entire amplifier, including the power transistors, and uh, these meters are showing the bias current. Uh, they're measuring across the 
uh, output emitter resistor, so I'm not entirely certain what that translates to in current, but the proper value for these meters to show is to 20 millivolts each. Now that, that, that's probably going to vary a bit, uh, it's not trimmed in, and uh, we are having quite a few ground loops since I'm grinding the scope here, as well as through the electrical grid, through the transformer, so there's going to be a bit of noise, a bit of inconsistencies, but we're looking for a rough idea of uh, whether or not this thing is going to explode or not. So, uh, we've just got to get on with it. Starting at a few volts AC again. We are not measuring the uh, rail voltage, I'll just go by the power consumption. Getting the expected DC offset. I'm probably going to get quite a bit more current on, uh, on the meters for a while until the amplifier stabilizes, which it doesn't do for until it reaches a relatively high. Power supply voltage, we're just drawing at 36 watts and climbing 170 volts AC, so we should really be getting there. We've got a relay click, and uh, we're drawing 46 watts, including a transformer, so I'm happy to take this up to 230 now. Okay, 230 volts, 55 watts consumed. Nothing's on fire. We've got what? Uh, 9 millivolts and uh, 9 millivolts. So we are on the low side on the idle current and we don't seem to have any DC offset or anything going on. So let's see if this is going to pass the uh, signal. Install some shorting plugs to make sure nothing's getting past while we adjust it. So we've got a blip there. We'll get another blip, that's a good sign. We'll just hook our one kilohertz sine wave back in. Going stereo this time around. And that's a fine looking what? Oh, that looks like a dodgy adapter. That's looking quite all right. No excess current being drawn, no nothing. That uh, occasional glitching might be. Oh, there we go. Uh, given how irregular that was and how it's not responding to knocking, I'd say that's a dodgy connector. These adapts I have aren't the best. Dodgy connector, no doubt about it. Right, who? So, let's see if we can hook some speakers up to this thing. I want to hear it sing. Before we do that thing, let's just bring another meter in and adjust for DC offset with our nice new 10 turn pots. This might be turning into the most pure AC Pioneer SX950 on the, in the world. There we go, that's good enough, it's going to drift with temperature anyway. And the other channel... There we go. Spot on. Now that's some damn fine DC offset matching right, right there. Happy with that. Right here. Speakers time. 
Alright, V lights have been dimmed, the proper plastic test speakers have been deployed. A public domain song should be getting fed into the amplifier, which has been upgraded to direct grid connection. So, here we go. Oh, there's no sound. Okay, the pre-power amplifier jumpers have been replaced in place of these shorting plugs, so let's try it again. And I do believe we've got some audio. I think that ought to sum it up for this video, so I'm definitely going to do a proper performance check on this thing, but I think we've been going at this for quite long enough, so thank you for watching, cheerio! And just because I didn't want to let you down, let's just put on the knobs. I actually got this thing minus one of these knobs and it took a considerable amount of eBay hunting to actually get the right one because these knobs are the same as I used on all the smaller SX series receivers except they are slightly larger these are the volume knobs for the smaller ones and uh, the smaller ones actually have a slightly smaller version of these for everything else whereas this one is just one step up with a giant volume knob and large these ones and I think I ordered probably three of these smaller ones which were advertised to fit this one and none of them do they just fit for smaller ones up to the 850 that's probably just because the 950 is such an oddball they weren't very common, apparently. They weren't, supposedly weren't very good value for money since the 850 was good enough for most stuff and the 1050 was considerably stronger. This was just a tiny little step over the 850. Anyway. Cheerio.